At first glance, this may seem like an ordinary man out for an ordinary bike ride. But look and listen a little more closely. Daniel Kish is completely blind. In fact, he doesn't even have eyes, save for prosthetic ones. Daniel has never seen a tree, a car, or even the bicycle he's riding. Pedaling down a street, he somehow avoids cars. He can even sense when to turn corners, much like a bat that uses sonar to navigate. So how does he know where he's going? Or how to avoid oncoming traffic? The answer can be found in the clicking sound you hear. It's called echolocation. The sound bounces off objects. So I'm hearing the reflection of sound as it comes back. Daniel showed me how he navigates the streets. The passageway between buildings. And then we have um, stuff, basically, in the way. Tall stuff, posts or something, right in the middle of the walkway. Bats use it to fly around in the dark, and dolphins use it to navigate the oceans. Daniel uses echolocation, or sound, to see. Every environment has its own acoustical signature. Every surface has its own acoustical signature. Daniel was born with an aggressive form of eye cancer, called retinal blastoma. By the time he was 13 months old, both of his eyes were removed. You're 45. So you lost your sight at such a young age. You don't have any, any memory of vision. I have no memories at all. Oh, I was using echolocation from the age of two or, or younger, but I really didn't know that much about it. It was just how you, how you adapted to your environment without really understanding it? Yes, I doubt very seriously that most sighted people give much thought or attention about how they see. So I really didn't give much thought or attention about how I see. Daniel uses echolocation to ride his bike. Cook. Is this a dish that you normally cook, Daniel, no, or are you no. experimenting this is with a total, me? This is a total experiment. <laughs> and even hike alone in the mountains. Using sound to see can be a hard concept for a sighted person to understand. But Daniel will tell you, he sees his environment as a series of images created in his mind based on what he hears using echolocation. So you're calling out into the environment you're essentially asking the environment, what are you and where are you? And you're receiving those answers. So you're getting an image and in your mind. Yes, I definitely get uh, three-dimensional images with depth and character and richness. And I can process those and I can interact with those. From his modest bungalow in Long Beach, Daniel runs a small nonprofit called World Access for the Blind. Since being established in 2000, World Access has been the lone voice preaching echolocation. Well, in fact, that's, that's, that's every that's major amazing. blind organization in America does not support Daniel's mission. So, Daniel, the National Federation of the Blind will say that echolocation is just too complicated. Uh, for, for most blind people to grasp. It's not so much the Federation that's, that's a concern. You have here a blindness profession, the blindness field, who by and large really kind of intractably remains committed, if you will, to a traditional approach which is about, in my opinion, restriction. It is about this is how you do things. This is the right way for a blind person to do things. This is safe. This isn't safe. When people say you have superhuman abilities, how do you respond? I'm human. Um, I haven't been bitten by a radioactive spider or anything.